Good morning. This is Crocker's Crazy Living. It is Sunday morning at uh, 8.30. Happy New Year. 2022 is gone and 2023 is here. And I sincerely pray that it is a better year this year than it was last year. Between sicknesses and um, the um, hurricane that we had, 2022 was a rough year for us down here in Florida. So anyway, today I'm coming to you live. I'm going to make some quick coleslaw. <coughs> um for the um, brisket that I made yesterday for New Year. I got the kids coming over later and we're gonna have brisket and coleslaw and green beans. So here I have a couple of bags of pre, that's not gonna be a big enough bowl. I'll have to mix this up in a bigger bowl and then transfer it back into this bowl. One minute. Okay. I typically have to use my big stainless steel bowl for anything that I do anymore. I went to the store and I bought a couple of bags of your classic coleslaw mix. Now, if you want to shred your own cabbage and uh, carrots, by all means, you, you can do that. I do take quite a bit of shortcuts because sometimes I just don't feel like um, shredding carrots and uh, coleslaw or cabbage. Um, so I have two bags of coleslaw mix and uh, to that I use I have any sour cream I'm going to use some Hellman's mayonnaise. I I typically have make the make this recipe different. Quite often I make it different. I like to change things around, I guess. I was making a coleslaw one time uh, for brisket and I was I decided to use mayonnaise, some sour cream, some sugar and some vinegar. Um, my normal recipe for coleslaw is coleslaw mix, sugar, and uh, Miracle Whip, Ma Miracle Whip salad dressing. That is all I used to put in there. And then I would add a can of drained pineapple tidbits because it made it kind of sweet. And the kids really liked it with the pineapple in there. It was different. Um, but when I made the coleslaw the one time for the brisket, I didn't want to put pineapple in it because you want just a classic, um, you want just a classic coleslaw for your brisket. Some people make brisket sandwiches, so they put the brisket on a bun and then they put the coleslaw on top. And they also do that with pork, barbecue pork. Um, so I wanted a classic style, um, uh, coleslaw. Where's my sugar? I wanted a classic style of coleslaw so people could do that if they wanted to. Um, today, I don't know how everybody's going to eat the brisket. I didn't go get any buns. I might have to go get some buns to put on it. So, anyway. Okay, so here I'm going to use... I got like a, um, a normal table tablespoon. I'm going to do about that much sour cream, maybe two spoonfuls, maybe two spoonfuls of sour cream. Okay. 
And I'll use about the same amount of mayonnaise. So if I were to guess, I would say that's close to a, a quarter, maybe a heavy quarter cup of sour cream. I'm going to add a couple of really big blobs, maybe like half a cup to a cup of mayonnaise. I'm going to find a measuring cup and do like a quarter cup of a quarter cup of sugar. I'll just kind of sprinkle that all around. And then I'm going to do a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And then I'm going to stir this all around. And now the trick to making a good coleslaw is you've got to have enough dressing in it to kind of wet it down, but not enough, not so much that you're going to make it soupy because it will sit in the fridge and it will make its own dressing as it sits. Maybe I'll do a splash of milk. I think that's what I did last time. Splash of milk. I had my kids telling me that this particular coleslaw that I made that time was the best close coleslaw they ever had. It was pretty shocking for me because they used to like the other coleslaw really good too. See, so there it's nicely coated. You got your cabbage is nicely coated, but it's not soupy. I'm just going to, at this point you can taste it, but you're not going to really taste much because the sugar hasn't had time to melt into the cabbage. Now we're eating this for lunch, so I wanted to get it made. So let's taste it. It's got a good flavor to it. I think I need more sugar. Depends on how sweet you like your slaw. My grandma always made her slaw pretty sweet. We always liked sweet. Another half a splash of the vinegar. I like the kick of the vinegar. It, you know, cooking is, a lot of it is based upon what you like, your taste. If you don't like that much vinegar, don't use that. If you don't want any vinegar, don't use it. A lot of people use Marzetti's coleslaw dressing. Well, guess what's in it? Milk, mayonnaise, vinegar, sugar. That's what's in Marzetti's. If you look at ever look at the label, plus a bunch of the other crap you don't really need. All right, taste it again. I washed, I did wash my spoon off after I tasted this. That's pretty good. I think I'll leave it like that. Maybe, I don't know. Much more vinegar. So this is probably three tablespoons of vinegar. I 
I don't want to add more mayonnaise. I don't need any more sour cream. I don't need any more milk. Mm. That's it. Mm, there's a little bit more sugar. All right, that's going to be it. It's all trial and error. telling my husband too that um, sometimes you buy cabbage at the store you you there it's like you know when you when you see cabbage in the in the farm stands you get these beautiful cabbages with all these extra green leaves on the outside well at the grocery store they pick all that off they pick all those extra green leaves off and they leave just the head of cabbage because they sell it by the pound. Um, typically farm stands will sell cabbage by the each, by the head. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I don't buy my own cabbage and cut it up, shred it by hand because if I'm going to do that, I want a cabbage head that has all those beautiful extra green leaves on on it. Because that extra, that green in your cabbage, um, in your coleslaw, is, is just really, really pretty. Um, and they didn't have that at Winn-Dixie. Uh, there is a beautiful farm stand in Wachula. She's on Facebook. Her place is called Jody's Pea Patch. She has a farm. She does uh, pole beans. Um, and what, are, what, are the, what are the beans that she does? She does pole beans. She grows squash. She grows cabbage because they've had some beautiful cabbage. Um, and then she goes to a, a produce place and she buys other produce and sells it at her stand. But she does sell what they grow. They grow what they grow. The pole beans. Um, there's some other beans I'd never heard of before that they, they grow them and they shell them. Um, conch peas? Conch peas. Um, they had some black eyed peas going for New Year's. She said not a lot, but they had some. And I follow her on Facebook. I'm yet to get to her farm stand. She's over in Wachula, for, so for me, that would be a day trip. I'm sure it's a couple of hours over there, an hour and a half to two hours over there. Um, she's only open on Fridays and Saturdays when she has produce boxes that she puts together and she sells by order, per order. Let's taste this. Perfect. Mm. Oh, that's good. So I have not had the opportunity to get to her yet. Um, I would love to go over there and have a fair amount of money so I could buy a lot of produce. And, um... You know, make it worth your while if you're going to go all the way over to Wachula to buy produce. Better have enough money with you to um, buy quite a bit. Because it all looks so good. She's got white corn going, or white corn, she buys the white corn from somebody else. 
And I have seen a lot of bicolored corn or yellow corn this this year. I have not seen any white corn. She's got the white silver queen corn over there. So someday I'll get there. All right. Now I'm going to take got my coleslaw ready. I should put just a little bit of this. Let me see if I have celery seed. Yep. My husband has really been enjoying coleslaw over at um, Wing King where we go get our wings. And they put celery seed in their coleslaw. And I told him, I said, I used to put celery seed in there, but I stopped doing it because he had, he had a diverticulitis problem and the seeds were uh not helping his situation so i quit using the celery seed but um he started buying their coleslaw and he said he really liked it and i said well they have celery seed in it and i quit putting celery seed in mine there i just mixed some a uh, little bit of celery seed in there you don't need a lot of it i just need it so I'm going to go ahead and cover this. I have these bags, these um, covers. They look like this. I bought them on Amazon. And it's like a shower cap for your bowl. You stretch them out and you slip it over your bowl just like that. No more having to mess with plastic wrap. No more having to find the foil. It's right here. I love it. Just cover it up real quick. I bought them on Amazon. I got a whole bunch of them for like five or six dollars I think. Let me show you what the bag looks like. Uh, I, they probably came from China. I don't know. You get a whole bag of them. I think like I have like a thousand. It says a hundred. It seems like there's more than a hundred in there. But anyway, they're like six or seven bucks. I like them because they're very easy to work with. I hate fighting with saran wrap. It's the worst thing. All right, so now my coleslaw is going to go in <coughs> in here in the fridge. Push it back there. And uh, let it sit there until... We get ready to eat this afternoon after everybody gets back from church. I didn't feel like going to church. I should watch it on live on, on TV. Um, anyways, I got the brisket in there warming up. And then I uh, got my coleslaw ready. And then I had gotten some green beans from a friend um, that was in a great big pan. And they're southern style green beans. Uh, Bob Evans makes them. And they have onion and ham in it. And um, it had no, she had an overabundance of them. So she gave me a pan of them uh, before we went on Christmas break. And I threw it in my freezer. And um, since I was sick with the flu over Christmas, I missed all of my Christmas celebrations. So... I didn't get to cook anything or enjoy the family on Christmas Day. I had to do it after Christmas, which was okay, but not my first choice. And um, I never got to use the green beans because 
I offered them to other family members to take to uh, my mother-in-law's for Christmas dinner and they said that they didn't need them, that they had plenty of food. So I pulled a pan of those out and thawed them out. They're in the fridge. I'm going to uh, use those as well. Um, so we'll have green beans and brisket and coleslaw and Amanda's going to bring an appetizer. So that'll be a nice New Year's Day lunch and uh, we'll just take it outside and it's been beautiful out here down here uh, we had that cold snap last week for Christmas it was very cold for Christmas it was like in the 30s um, but now it's been warming up into the um, high 70s or 80s in the daytime but it's been pleasant it hasn't been so hot and sticky you can't handle sitting outside so I'll get the chairs out and I'll get the furniture around. Amanda, when she left here, she left her outdoor furniture and I put the, I put all the uh, cushions in the uh, shed. So I'll get all the cushions out and I'll get all that set up so we have a nice little area to sit outside and enjoy the fresh air. It's too hot for a fire, but we can enjoy the fresh air and the breeze and listening to the birds and I'll tell you when you've been stuck in the house for almost two weeks because you had the flu simple things uh, like s sitting outside and listening to the birds is very welcoming it's very heartwarming it just makes you feel good I guess it just makes you feel good so anyway that's it for today uh, I hope everybody gets to enjoy their day today. Um, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube page and you like my videos, please hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. It helps me out. Um, ring the bell if you want to be notified when I post another video. I don't believe I had made, did a coleslaw video yet, so that's why I went ahead and did one today. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. That's it for this episode of Crocker's Crazy Living. Um, I'll be back another time with a different recipe. Don't know what it's going to be. I don't really have anything in mind right now. I do know I would like to do some par barbecue pork in my canner, my pressure canner. So when I get around to doing that, I will definitely put that on my YouTube page so you guys can see that. I love canning. Um, doing the meat is a little bit more finicky than doing vegetables or salsa um, because it is a low acid food and it requires pressure canning in order to get it sealed but I saw this girl she did it on YouTube and um, her recipe looked delicious and I actually went and bought the book I can't I have a canning cookbook that I love but um, I bought the one she showed on her video because it looked like it had a lot of different recipes in it and um, canning books are canning cookbooks are worth the money because they give you a detailed step-by-step -step with photos so anybody can learn how to can and do it correctly because that's the big thing is doing it the right way so anyways that's it for today I'll be back with another video another time have a wonderful day everybody and thank you for watching bye